Yeah, thanks. Thanks for the warm welcome. Um, and uh, apologies um, beforehand, probably, that I want, will bother you with a number of slides with, with tons of uh, numbers and so on. I mean, Ernst & Young is an accounting and advisory house. Probably this is the nature of our being. Um, what we do in uh, venture capital and in clean tech in specific is since years we, uh, we look, look into the investment streams. We have an ongoing cooperation with a number of external partners here as well. What I'm going to present um, is the Venture Insights uh, that is being developed uh, together with people from professors from Stanford and University of Chicago. <clears throat> and as you will see, um, it's, it's quite a deep look into uh, what happens in the, in the investment landscape. Probably a quick word on, on, on Ernst Young. We have set up a global structure of clean tech specialists. Um, myself, I am heading the European, Middle East, Indian networks. And um, that's the reason why I'm also quite involved in, in developing uh, these uh, thought leaderships. Apart from that, if there is interest, you might approach me afterwards. Uh, we have some, some very recent publications on e-mobility and also an ongoing annual publication on, on clean tech in general. I click through it. I only have a quarter uh, or 20 minutes. Um, nothing surprising. I mean, that is some definitions beforehand. Uh, let's have a look at the global um, uh, landscape. These are numbers taken from um, Bloomberg New Energy Finance, our global cooperation partner. Um, as you see, um, financing levels have grown dramatically um, over the past years, also in, in 2010. But um, as we're talking about BC, there is a different message. I uh, will um, come back to that afterwards. This includes all sort of financing, including asset finance. So if you think of the big wind parks, for example, this is included there. Um, so that's the overall trend. Um, but as uh, Jan-Michael Hess um, also pointed out, it's really also the question whether um, large parts or at least some part of this money also goes into early stage investments, which is high risk. And here we have a bit of a different picture. Um, <clears throat> coming um, uh, in, uh, on the second slide uh, to, the, um, uh, to the exit route, probably more from an, from an VC point of view, these are the transactions um, in, this, in the field. As you see, um, the, uh, on a quarterly basis, uh, the activity has grown uh, significantly uh, past crisis. Um, 2009, almost zero. Yeah? That's, that, that is no big surprise, probably. But together with the overall M&A um, deal volume levels, also in clean tech, that picked up again. Um, and um, that probably is a promising uh, sign in particular um, if you as an investor also think of, well, it's easy to invest, but then um, is there really a route to, to exit it after three, five, seven, eight years? Um, again, um, transactions um, in the clean energy. If you look at the year-end levels, it's coming down a bit um, in the third quarter. That's the latest number we have available here. Um, the uh, interesting question is, what is the exit route? Um, if you think of IPO, then you will see that um, emerging markets are very interesting. We even um, have some projects where we helped clients going to the Far East um, uh, IPOing. Why that? Because emerging markets are stronger. Europe is quite weak still and shaky. Um, US a bit better. And M&A activity, as I said, is picking up. Now a very close look to where the money really goes. So not just clean tech as a buzzword, but um, um, if you look into the deep, deeper, have a deeper, deeper look into the uh, different subsectors, um, and we uh, defined it as uh, solar, or on the bottom, biofuels, energy efficiency, energy storage, water, wind, and the other. And you have a clear <coughs> movement, I think, just looking at the solar, which is a good, good uh, indicator for green energy in general. I mean, after a record, record level in 2008, it def definitely comes down, so obviously, it is less and less um, a technology play, whereas um, one other important sector is energy efficiency. Here, the gray bar in the middle. That is becoming more and more important. 
And um, <clears throat> that also, I think, uh, shows a bit uh, the general political landscape. Um, just thinking of a country, we are in Germany here, I mean, uh, think of our country. I think on the one hand, we had uh, good efforts and, and, and success with bringing green energy on stream. Um, but now uh, the problem is to integrate this energy, to balance the gap between the energy supply on the one hand and the demand on the other hand, and last not least, um, reduce overall energy and resource needs. And that's exactly what energy efficiency is about. So that is probably the, um, the uh, most hot, uh, uh, the hottest sector at the moment. I come back to that later on if we go into a, a deeper analysis of the portfolio companies. Again, a global view. Um, um, here you see the proportion of clean tech of the overall VC investment amounts. Um, interesting um, message, I think, um, if you compare the United States versus Europe. Here um, in Europe, it's coming down a bit in 2010. So, um, don't have any firm opinion on that, to be very honest, but it's just uh, so significant yeah, that one really would probably think about whether um, other tech sectors like, like bio or, or IT have come up uh, again uh, with respect to importance. United States, as it's more of a latecomer in, the, in this field, um, still has very strong needs there. So um, it's, it's a bit of a different different um, trend, and Europe really is, is special here if you compare that to the other, to the other sectors, Israel and uh, other, sorry, uh, regions, Israel and China. Here, um, the absolute, absolute numbers of um, amounts raised and of uh, the deals uh, closed. I think also, again, uh, some interesting messages here. If you look at the, um, the overall amounts of money collected, it's, well, it's probably not a, in, in, in news, it's not news, but it's really uh, always striking that uh, the, the overall levels um, are so high in the US compared to the uh, European levels. Um, and uh, as you know, one can also see that from, from the funds uh, which are there, they are, um, a, they have more money uh, to, to spend. B, they spend it at higher proportions. So pre-money uh, or post-money valuations are much higher. Um, well, what is the reason for that? Um, I think apart from the cultural thing, yeah, that there's, it's, it's probably a bit more entrepreneurial and there's more hop or top um, uh, mentality, um, there might also be uh, um, one issue that there are better addressable or bigger addressable markets. Yeah? Just if you think of, 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 of the utility landscape. Better now? Oh, sorry. <laughs> I hope that uh, a single word was understandable so far. Um, um, if you think of the utility landscape, for example, um, um, in Europe it's, it's quite, um, quite difficult. Only in Germany we have 1,000 utilities. Historically, they have set up their in-house solutions. So if you think of a smart grid company, which intends to sell into this market, it will find it much diff more difficult than, than in a country which, 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 which has better standards uh, overall. So in general, addressable markets are, um, uh, are better there. And that also has a reason, um, is a bit important reason why um, the business plans are more ambitious. Um, so I think that there are also objective uh, reasons for that. Um, and um, the question then of the, the valuations, um, I mean, it's not I I implicitly you have it. Yeah. Uh, what if you, if you divide the numbers, you will see that um, um, still uh, the U.S. is twice as high uh, from, from a valuation point of view as we have it in, in, in Europe. So the financing routes are. Um, much more um, uh, important there. Um, but it came down a bit. In 2008, we really had peak levels, um, and uh, this also has come down um, significantly in the US. Now the question of uh, the initial financings. Um, and uh, I can say that I also, from, from my personal perspective, uh, 
respect to the projects we are advising on, it's really becoming um, more difficult um, later days uh, to, to raise um, financing for early stage companies. Um, uh, we see sort of a strategy shift here and there, um, uh, also in the VC industry, so more risk adverse. I think what, what can, one can also say is that some houses um, who were successful in the past and also shifted a bit to a PE model um, and say, said, well, we can do uh, bigger deals in, 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 in this industry, which we know better than the traditional PE houses. So I think that these are reasons why um, you see the numbers of the initial financing coming down here. And um, also looking at, uh, at the fund of the funds level, um, also here, if, if there's a first-time fund, I think there's almost uh, no possibility of getting money. I was present as a, at a uh, VC conference um, where we had a session with um, the uh, institutional investors, and then there was a bit of a sounding um, uh, or a poll with the, with the people in the room, and uh, the question was, who did uh, financing so over the past 12 months, so probably half of them um, showed they did. Um, and then the question was, who did first-time funds? And I think only one finger raised there. Yeah? So that just shows how risk-adverse the landscape um, in the meantime is. Um, energy efficiency, as I said, is the most important um, uh, area. We have smart grid solutions, smart home, electrical control, lighting, software, building systems, um, or also combustion um, uh, energy. It's a, it, it's, it's a very widespread uh, area. Sometimes it also falls within the traditional uh, industrial products um, space. But there is um, is also an independent development path and a tech play here, which, which is very important. Um, and I think the, the, the most important drivers are, if you look at the US, you have high infrastructure requ um, financing requirements, so look at the low-cost solutions there, so there's a big uh, opportunity there. Here in, 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 in Europe, as I said, it's the, the, the topic, I think, number one topic is system integration um, and um, also bringing down overall cost levels for, for energy supply. And then last not least, um, I mean, there's the saying that the uh, that the CO2, uh, which you don't em emit at all, is the easiest and the cheapest way of avoiding uh, or abatement cost. Yeah? So um, um, I think that here uh, lies the, the real value added. And there is no real, um, real difference between uh, the two major um, regions in the world. Um, looking at the... Um, population or the portfolios as it stands at the moment. Um, um, as I said, the most important regions are, of course, Europe and the United States. Um, and the equity invested is with 16 billion US dollars. Um, I think uh, significant and um, impressive. I will pick out now, um, I will pick two sectors, which is solar and, and uh, energy efficiency. In solar, you can see um, that most money went into, into uh, crystalline. That is probably um, money which is a, a bit older, meanwhile, and six speed for, for uh, um, uh, rigid solutions or for flexible solutions is um, the second uh, important uh, source. And there are some niche markets like, like solar thermal, which is probably um, uh, not as easy um, because there is traditional stuff like the mirrors, plus there is very high-tech stuff which is already dominated by industrial players like the tubes in, uh, in, 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 in trough systems. Um, but in, interestingly enough, if you could look at the, um, at, again, at, at, a, at a comparison between the US and, and Europe, you'll see uh, that, that uh, crystalline in, in, in the US doesn't play any role. I think it's, it's a latecomer um, sign because uh, the money was invested in Europe already and there's no real reason to um, think of uh, polysilicon um, 
uh, reduction and so on um, at, at uh, these times because polysilicon prices have come down uh, significantly and I expect it to fall um, again. Um, energy efficiency um, in turn. Here we have the different subsectors. I think it's quite interesting. I don't want to go into the very detail of, of, of the numbers here, of course, but um, for, for every investor, I think it's quite in, interesting to, to really look at the, at the very sub-segments, sub yeah, because uh, this overall clean tech space is so widespread yeah, um, uh, that um, one really has to understand uh, at the end of the day whether a, a really is, a sub-sector is really very, very attractive or not. Um, apart from the question whether the technology or the company is promising you're looking at. Um, um, so, um, um, again, comparing uh, Europe and US, um, you will find that the sheer amount of money um, is, uh, is really um, tremendous. I mean, smart grid with 800 um, a million US dollars compared to a 50 in, in Europe. Is, is tremendous. Um, you might have heard that, 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 that there are now legal requirements to upgrade a very old-fashioned uh, infrastructure, so there is more need. Um, and you also, we all know that there are high financing needs and uh, budgetary pressures, so um, one is looking for uh, higher tech and, and uh, lower cost solutions. Um, Good. Um, my last point um, would be uh, corporate venture capital. Um, this has become more and more important over the past years. Um, I think um, um, both uh, the CVC and the entrepreneurs have learned a, a bit in the past. Yeah? Uh, at the very beginning, I think many corporates had the approach to say, well, um, if I'm interested in the company, I want to have a, um, an option to buy it and get control of it. And, um, uh, and on the other hand, uh, uh, many entrepreneurs were quite shy with getting in touch with established corporates because they wanted to, to um, be independent and also don't want to have any detrimental effect if they go to their clients and investors. So um, I think that has changed. Meanwhile, um, corporate venture capital lists are quite um, quite professional with their approach. Um, they can offer higher volumes, amounts of money, in particular in Europe, um, than, than, than um, only financial uh, VCs, also going into the two-digit million amounts of money. And um, they can also offer um, a lower risk investment profile in the sense that um, they are a potential client. Yeah? So they can offer a showroom, for example. We have one example. Where uh, it's a smart grid company which has a utility as a, a corporate investor and um, they can apply their products and also test their products and, and further develop their products on the field um, uh, with this utility. Um, and uh, it also is very powerful if, if they go to other, other clients to the market and uh, can, can say the pilot works. Um, apart from utilities, there are technology companies, chemical companies, um, also the famous Mittelstand, so medium-sized um, industrial companies, equipment suppliers who give money, and last not least, IT and uh, software companies. Um, here you can um, see that, um, again, I mean, it's not a surprise that, again, energy efficiency is um, most, most important. Um, and uh, the... Um, but I think uh, it's interesting that, um, that uh, some, some, some segment, seg sub-segments are of more interest. Yeah? And um, being more technical uh, things and very linked to the industrial products like energy efficiency and storage, um, this is more attractive or easier for corporate investors than, than others, which stand for themselves like solar. Uh, there, so there is less uh, linkage into the core business of these investors. Here are some numbers on um, the proportion um, of corporate venture capitalists overall. So this is around um, uh, 15, 20 percent um, generally. Um, so um, I would say 
more or less stable, although there are some, some movements here and there. Okay, then uh, summarizing, um, also being a bit conscious of time, um, summarizing um, what, what, what one can say is that the record levels of 2008 are no longer, um, are not yet reached again. Valuations have come down, that is probably more the reason rather than the number of deals. Uh, we see that some exit routes are a bit slagging, like IPO in Europe, but uh, are picking up again. Um, early stage financing is really the issue. Um, uh, so I think that that's, this should be one of the topics which should be uh, discussed at a conference like this, uh, this one uh, very deeply. Um, but generally speaking, I mean, if you think of the policy um, and of the resource prices going up, um, I think um, the, the general landscape really points into this direction and this really supports the business plans that um, come to your, uh, are sent to you and which you need to analyze. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I can say that um, if you are interested in, in this publication, there's much more stuff, um, or in any other publication, please um, talk to me right now or um, send me an email or contact me at this, uh, uh, in my office. Thanks. All right, uh, we have time for one or two questions. Uh, please raise your hand and wait for the microphone runner to find you if you have a question for Robert Seiter. Yeah, you speak of uh, Europe altogether, but uh, did you notice anything between the main European country? I mean, are there some difference between UK, between Germany, between France, or are the, ten the trends for Europe uh, general? Um. Uh, well, we, we, we didn't go into that much of detail, but I think generally speaking, one can say that, um, I mean, if you look at the European landscape, of course, there are national markets, there are also investors only investing into DACH, so the German-speaking countries, or in France. Um, what I can see is also that um, in order to overcome or to bridge that a bit, um, there are corporations between these national type of investors um, in France and Germany, for example. Um, but uh, one other thing which is important, I think, is the amount of money you can raise. And if it's really higher amounts, if it is IPO, think of the aim, yeah, I think that still the London market is um, a bit different and outstanding. I have uh, one question for you. Um, who would you say are the top five corporate VCs in Europe? Who are the top five companies investing money into clean tech from the corporate side? On the corporate side, yeah, um, uh, you have. Um, I, I think that, that, that these companies who invested into solar are um, are money-wise um, more important. Why? Because um, there are very high technological risks also in later stages. So if you set up a, a fab and you need 15, 100 million euros, you still have te technological risks. So it's still not really bankable. Yeah, and. Um, um, so naturally, the, the, the companies which invested there, like in Intel, you know, for example, um, uh, and uh, are of importance. But there are other corporates. Um, if you if you think of uh, utilities like RWE in Germany or a Bosch, um, who've set up their um, their venture um, uh, arms, and then uh, a Dow and the BSF are also quite um, important to notice. Any other question from your side? No, so it's time for our speaker gift, a green design book oh. to you, for you. Thank you very much, Robert, for sharing the venture insights <laughs> and uh, a final round of applause. <laughs>